Welcome to application design. So this video is for anyone who happened to like drop out of class or miss class today, or for anyone who happens to stumble upon these videos outside of taking this class. So this is programming 455. It is application design. I wanted to go through a couple of like high level points about what this class is, what you'll learn, what this class isn't. Um, so application design is a course that takes you through the full process of shipping an application from the planning stages to deploying and testing. So we're gonna be building something from scratch together. We're gonna to learn about front-end programming, back-end programming, databases together. And we're gonna use a JavaScript stack of technologies to do that. So we're gonna use HTML, CSS, React, Node, um, and TypeScript to build this application. It is not expected that coming into the class you know any of these technologies, but what is expected is that you need to at least know one programming language reasonably well. To get into the class, you have to have taken object-oriented programming or, or the equivalent of that. So you should know some language well, like you should know what a variable is, a function, a loop, an array. And when we introduce new languages in this class, like when we cover HTML, CSS, JavaScript, TypeScript, I will cover the the basics but I'm going to go through them pretty quickly so we're not going to spend 30 minutes explaining what a variable is we're just going to talk about um, the specifics of creating and manipulating variables in JavaScript and in TypeScript and to give folks an idea of that kind of roadmap of things we're going to do I want to pull up the whiteboard from class today so in class we talked about the typical structure of an application so applications usually have, uh, and there's a little bit of an asterisk here, three big components. There's the front end, the back end, and the database. And the front end is your user interface, often called your client. So in the web programming that we're gonna be doing, that is usually gonna be our browser um, that is loading some code, letting a, like loading images, loading text, allowing us to click on buttons and enter things into forms. It's your user interface. Your user interface will often then talk to your backend, which is also called a server, where you can run logic of your application that needs to be secure or, or logic of your application that's maybe expensive to run, um, expensive, too expensive to run on someone's um, mobile device in their browser. And then the other big component here is the database, which is where you store data it is your persistent data store. It's a piece of software or, or databases are a class of software that are really good at storing and retrieving data. Um, so that means that like when our user creates a new account in our front end, that there will be a request that goes to the back end to create a new account. And then that talks to the database to say, hey, we need to create room for this account. Here's the username, here's the user information, here's their password, stores in the database so that later on, Someone can come back to that um, application and try logging in again, and the back end will be able to look up in the database, hey, here's the username and password I was given, is that valid? Um, and then you know, send back whether or not that user is able to log in uh, or not. I have a video that walks through this uh, kind of diagram that I'll link in the description. It's from another course so that you can see me explaining this piece by piece. I'm going pretty quickly here. In terms of what we're going to be doing, we're going to be learning front-end programming, and we will learn to use HTML, CSS, and React to build our front-end. These are the languages of the browser. We will, in addition to that, learn TypeScript and React uh, when the time comes. Don't worry about those for now. When we get to backend programming, we will use JavaScript again, and we'll use Node and Express to build our backends. And then for database programming, we're going to use a NoSQL database, um, a NoSQL document database uh, from Firebase, which is called Firestore, which will help us get a database up and running quickly. And the roadmap for this class is that we're going to try building an application together and we're gonna build it in stages with progressive enhancement. So like the first set of things we're gonna do, we're gonna learn HTML and CSS. And then we'll learn how to sprinkle in JavaScript to make that 
uh, interactive. And then we will add in TypeScript and React to figure out ways that we can build our front ends uh, in a modular, maintainable way. So all of this is going to be on the front end. We'll be able to create a complete experience that's on the front end. And then once we've got that running, we'll be able to integrate it with Firestore, which is our database, so that someone can log in and do something, save some data, come back later, the data is still there. And then at the end, we'll, we'll bring in our server programming, our server-side programming with Node and Express to be able to do some things like validation, make sure that when someone tries to put something into our application, a piece of data, that it is a valid piece of data that has all the information it needs, it doesn't violate any of the rules. Like for uh, an easy example is passwords, like ensuring that once someone signs up, you know, the password is the right length, it has the right number of characters, uh, right number of sort of special characters sprinkled in to make the password secure. So the last thing that I, I wanna leave off with in this introduction is that uh, or leave you with two tips. So one is that there's a lot here. It's going to be like a fire hose turning on and trying to learn all of these different languages, especially if this is your first time using web technologies. Completely fine. We're trying to get immersed in them. And over the course of 15 weeks, we'll get comfortable working with them and building with uh, these web technologies. So don't panic. Um, and especially don't panic when something breaks. Take your time. Look back at past material and you'll be able to uh, make it through. These things will become, I don't wanna say second nature, but they'll become more comfortable uh, by the end of 15 weeks. The other thing that I wanna leave you with is a tip for how to follow along with these videos. So my recommendation is that when you're following along with technical tutorials, what you do is you watch it once and you take notes and you don't try and do any coding. Um, that allows you to focus on the concepts, you, you get everything, you make sure that you're sort of understanding and memorizing the things you need to memorize. And once you're done, you come back and you watch it again, but you watch it at two times the speed and you pause and you code along. And the reason why you do it this way is because that actually ends up being more effective for following along, because when you hit an error, you have an understanding of the big picture of what you're trying to do. Um, and you've got your notes and, and you feel like you've got good comprehension. So that debugging process becomes a lot easier. You have the context to help um, solve whatever specific problem you're hitting. Like maybe it's a syntax error. You type, you made a typo somewhere. Um, this versus you watching it once and trying to code along while watching it. Um, in that, la that latter situation, you're trying to pay attention to the big picture and you're trying to um, get all of the details right, all of the syntax right simultaneously. And that is a lot to try and do um, all at once. So it sounds like more work to watch these videos or any technical video twice, but it ends up being faster in the long run because you save time with uh, debugging. Okay, so that's all I got for this video. Um, in the next videos, we're going to be diving into front-end programming.